Today we have a special guest to talk about one of the remarkable achievements that uh, he has awarded in Australia and uh, by profession he's a doctor and he's a neurologist. Now first of all we would like to welcome Professor Tissa Vijayaratna, uh, the Chair of Migration Foundation Australia. Uh, welcome to the Sri Lanka Morning Show program Dr. Vijayaratna. Thank you very much uh, Tushara for having me for Sri Lankan Morning Show. Now Professor Tissa Vijayaratna, First, I would like to know, I know that you came from a very, uh, you know, with a lot of hardships. You started your career with a lot of hardships. Now, could you please tell us about your background? Uh, as uh, you and your viewers probably know, I am originally from Sri Lanka. Yes. I was born in what I believed as the most beautiful place in this world. It's a place called Bandaravila. Uh, our home was situated uh, on top of a mountain. In fact, uh, on a clear day, even today, if you are in my doorstep or my parents' doorstep, to be precise, uh, you could actually see the highest uh, peak uh, of Sri Lanka on the other side uh, right. uh, of, of that, uh, the scenery, which is Pidru Talagal, of course, uh, and Nuralia. And I used to remember uh, that area where the sky and earth uh, meet together on top of the mountain. So I grew up uh, in Bandaraville, of course, uh, and uh, then I finished off uh, my uh, advanced level studies uh, at uh, Bandaraville Central College. Uh, then I got selected to accidentally to do medicine uh, at uh, University of Peradeniya. Uh, let me excuse you for a minute. Now you said accidentally. Is it there was a reason uh, for the that? When we were uh, doing our O-level exams, uh, the at least uh, myself and mm -hmm. most of my classmates, uh, we had absolutely no idea what you could uh, get into. Uh, I, I enjoyed biology as a subject uh, the, during my primary school days, uh, so I preferred those subjects. Uh, and when I had the opportunity to select a mathematics stream or biology stream from my uh, grade 10 results, uh, I opted to do biology, not knowing where it would end up. Mm -hmm. So I did not know that I could end up in a medical school if I work hard enough. Uh, of course, we did uh, come to know when uh, the next year advanced level results uh, come on board because you could hear the rumors. Uh, so it's a coincidence. It, it, was, it was a coincidence. Uh, so that's why I said uh, accidentally. Yes. However, once I knew that uh, you could uh, get into medical school, I worked hard. Uh, and at the medical school also, uh, I worked hard uh, the, the compared to where I grew up, uh, where you had to work in a paddy field uh, and work uh, at home. There was no such thing as uh, PO studying for my contemporary kids, uh, at least. Uh, at the university, though, it was a different story. So you could uh, live with very little money at that time, and uh, the all you had to do was study. But it wasn't all rosy. I got caught uh, in 1988, uh, 89, 90 saga that uh, you probably the are too young to remember and uh, at that time uh, the, there was a lot of uh, youth unrest uh, and uh, the university students and high school students were targeted uh, by the rulers at that time they had to because uh, there was chaos uh, in the country so we had a huge hiatus uh, for about three years uh, again uh, the my parents uh, were reasonably tough uh, they basically made uh, myself housebound uh, to the extent that uh, I could not participate uh, in any of the protest activities uh, against uh, government or any other thing, although I had strong socialist views, uh, at least at that time. Uh, but uh, those three years, uh, I still spent uh, productively. Uh, I started writing, and I remember listening to Prema Keith Dalvis, uh, Sondru Sevana, and similar radio programs regularly, and then communicate with them via snail mail and then them uh, reading out some of my poems and emotions that I changed to words. Uh, that then went further and uh, I then became a feature writer for most uh, of the newspapers uh, and women's weeklies and children's magazines uh, in Colombo. And by the time uh, the government at that time were able to crush uh, the unrest group and reopen the universities, uh, I was almost uh, up to the level of a deputy editor of a very popular science weekly at that time. Mm -hmm. So I, th I believe I, I published a few thousand segments uh, in various aspects. So the universities reopened uh, and 
although I had the opportunity to change my career towards journalism, I opted to stay in medicine. I strongly believe that uh, you could make a big difference in human life uh, globally by sticking to that. Uh, carried on with my studies, uh, did reasonably well uh, in my medical school exams. Uh, after the internship uh, in Colombo, uh, where I did my internship in both professorial units, uh, I was offered uh, a lecturer post at a younger age at uh, Peradini Medical Faculty uh, under the uh, supervision of Professor Nimal Senanayaka, whom I knew as a young medical student uh, uh, as he was uh, pretty much interested in human mind and brain and neurology in particular. So I read uh, my ABC uh, of neurology under him. Uh, he is uh, a pioneer, he was a pioneer and he's still regarded as uh, one of the most well-known uh, neurophysicians from that side, that side of the world even to date. Then a few years later, I met uh, my wife, uh, uh, who is also Sri Lankan, but studied in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, she had uh, the scholarship uh, to come to Australia as uh, her high school exams were uh, pretty good at that time. Uh, we were initially friends and uh, then later on uh, it turned into uh, an affair and then we got married. Uh, still, my desire was to stay back in Sri Lanka as uh, I was uh, planning to promote neurological services in Peradeni at that time. Uh, but we had uh, a problem as uh, the, my wife's uh, qualification uh, was uh, not recognized uh, by Sri Lankan uh, the Medical Council. Uh, we had to go through a process uh, of getting that recognized. That became difficult uh, as there was a lot of unrest and a lot of strikes and chaos. Uh, and after about a year, we had to make a choice. Uh, I opted to uh, come to this part of the world uh, and restart the journey. Uh, so I had to restart. Uh, I had to retrain myself. Uh, fortunately, I met uh, the, some of the very good mentors. Uh, when we were going through training in New Zealand, uh, I met uh, an infectious diseases physician. Did you find it was very challenging at the very beginning? Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't. Uh, the, right. the main reason is uh, I realized that uh, uh, there is a need uh, for good doctors uh, in this part of the world. I realized that all you had to show is that you are safe uh, and you are competent. Uh, the, the reason that uh, I didn't find it uh, quite challenging is uh, I could see for the first time that there was no chaos uh, and uh, everything was planned uh, and uh, you knew that if there's a particular day that they're going to hold an exam, all you need to do is to prepare well and do your best uh, and uh, it will happen. It was very smooth. It, it was very smooth. smooth. Process, uh, yes. So the, the, uh, I approached the whole thing with very positive attitude. Uh, then uh, obviously I was wanting to get back to neurology. Uh, I had uh, some initial difficulties uh, to get into neurology while I was uh, in New Zealand as it was uh, competitive. Uh, but I still uh, on, the, on the year that I applied, uh, I got in straight away and I completed uh, most of my neurology training in New Zealand. And then I came back to Australia and did uh, further training in South Australia. And uh, then in 2005, I came to Melbourne. Uh, I was uh, going to go to Austin Hospital, where my wife currently works uh, as a psychiatrist. Uh, she was a trainee at that time also. Uh, however, I met uh, uh, one, of, uh, uh, one of my current mentors, uh, Professor Robert Helm, uh, at that time, who was heading up uh, neurology department at Western Health. Uh, we had a long discussion, and uh, he was uh, very keen to have me at Western Health, uh, and he challenged me to set up stroke services at Western Health. Uh, because of my background, uh, although it would have been an easy ride at Austin Health, uh, I opted to take the more challenging role. So I began uh, developing stroke services uh, at uh, Western Health uh, almost from the scratch, and then we build it up uh, to a world-class uh, stroke service uh, where we take part uh, on almost uh, all cutting-edge research that our colleagues do from Royal Melbourne Hospital, Austin Health, uh, Alfred, uh, St. Vincent, uh, Monash, uh, and so on. Uh, I believe uh, the our group uh, managed to publish uh, four or five high-quality papers uh, in New England Journal of Medicine, which is regarded as one of the most premier 
stroke journals. Then uh, I got involved with World Federation Neurology from 2008 onwards. Uh, that was also in an interesting story. Uh, I was in Bangkok uh, participating as a young neurologist uh, who is trying to learn and navigate through these global organizations and there was a work workshop. Uh, the workshop uh, was uh, about uh, neurology training in the developing world. So as I was sitting back uh, quietly without wanting to say anything, I realized that most of the things that I was hearing from the front uh, was not quite accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, as I frequently move back and forth uh, between Sri Lanka and a couple of other Asian countries, uh, I always kept my pulse uh, at uh, how we promote uh, brain health disorder related things uh, in resource limited places uh, and the place that I work also uh, is, is a very multicultural uh, region so we mm. basically cater for people from over 166 countries so it's mm. almost like United Nations uh, mm. at Western Health. Uh, so I raised my hand uh, when there was discussion time and uh, I made a few points uh, uh, in a sort of a polite way. I did not know who was uh, in the front. Uh, uh, later on, I realized that uh, the World Federation Neurology President at that time, Professor, Professor, Val Professor Vladimir Hachinsky and a couple of other leaders were in the front. Uh, so that was that. Uh, and when I came back... Uh, so have you got a good response? I, I had a good response yes. and I vividly remember that Professor Hachinsky corrected some of my statistics. Uh, when I said 62%, uh, uh, he said it was 62.8%. Mm -hmm. uh, very specific. Very specific. Uh, but when I came back uh, to Melbourne, I was uh, uh, going around my usual things. Uh, I received an email from Professor Hachinskin's PA. Her name is Rebecca. I still remember this. Uh, it, go, it went like this. Uh, I was not uh, uh, the associate professor, professor at that time. Dear Dr. Vijay Ratna, uh, Professor Hachinsky, uh, is very grateful for your comments uh, that you made uh, at the World Congress uh, Neurology at Bangkok uh, to get on with what you proposed uh, in the developing world uh, and issues that are pertaining to young neurologists. Uh, he has appointed you as a committee member for the Global Education Committee to represent this part of the world. What a wonderful so news. This is an opportunity for you to get on with the work. Uh, so that then uh, the went on and on and on and I took part in many committees. Of course, I worked hard and tried to make a difference. Uh, and uh, two years back, I was entrusted upon the duty of uh, leading the World Brain Committee and uh, Public Awareness uh, and Advocacy Committee, which we did successfully and I continue to do so. I'm happy to say that uh, recently concluded World Congress activities, uh, we were able to reach out uh, towards uh, 12 million mark uh, uh, human beings uh, covering 120 countries, uh, which is a remarkable achievement. Uh, so we are determined uh, to carry on with our brain health promoting work globally.